Hideo Kojima's long-awaited Death Stranding 2 just dropped a nearly 10-minute gameplay trailer during the PlayStation State of Play event. I went frame by frame to bring you as many details as possible. I am Moxie, and this is Heavy Speculation. If you are just as hyped for Death Stranding 2 or other gaming lore, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and it helps a ton. Let's get into it. According to Hideo Kojima's Twitter X whatever account, quote, the title logo is by Kyle Cooper, whom I've known since Metal Gear Solid 2. Music by Ludwig Porcel since Metal Gear Solid 5, and action director is Yuji Shimamura since Metal Gear Solid 5. So that's pretty cool. Starting off with the first sequence, there's Fragile in the sky. We'll call him Captain. They are inspecting a cocoon in a room that looks like an infirmary. Throughout the beginning of the sequence, Captain is changing out tools on his arm. This time, it's a saw. Fragile also has these weird chiral hands that look kind of like medical gloves coming from a unit on her back. Captain is played by George Miller, by the way. The guy who directed Mad Max and Happy Feet. Yeah. That George Miller. He's Captain. The captain uses his modular handsaw thing to cut the brittle eggshell-like cocoon. Now, this is weird for several reasons. First being the amount of tar that spills out of it. There seems to also be either specks of the cocoon or chiral speckles flying out of the background. Perhaps even some chiral speckles floating up from the cocoon on the left side too. Maybe it's because they're agitating the cocoon or shaking it out from the middle. The tar spills over onto the floor, so clearly the cocoon was pretty full of juice. The little flakes kind of look like chirelium. Then there's a BT kitty cat. A tar cat. It has wings for some reason and a tentacle for a tongue. BT kitty's eyes are yellow, kind of like chiral crystals, but also more neon. So what does it mean when something can manifest the tar into a cat? Is that a ka or a soulless husk? The wings kind of remind me of Louise's wings from the last trailer. Seems there could be some kind of connection between the wings and the beach, but who knows? In the next shot, it's revealed that there's a person in that cocoon. Their skin is gold. Perhaps the tar on their skin is from the cocoon being full of tar that spilled out earlier. The cocoon cracks off, kind of like an eggshell. Next, there's two scans that show up on a hologram in that same kind of bridges blue. The scans seem to be revealing the body encased within a cocoon, and the scan also seems to be highlighting something. I was interested if there was any legitimate medical terms on the scan, and it turns out there, there might be. Reversing the image shows TMR in white font. According to the National Institute of Health, targeted muscle reinnervation TMR, is a surgical procedure used to improve the control of upper limb prosthesis. Residual nerves from the amputated limb are transferred to reinvigorate new muscle targets that have otherwise lost their function. But according to Boston University School of Medicine, it can also mean transmyocardial laser revascularization. That's, that's something. Also called TMR is a treatment for patients with coronary artery disease who have not responded to or are not eligible for procedures such as agnioplasty or stenting or medication and coronary artery bypass graft surgery. 
a surgical procedure used to relieve angina, chest pain, that is generally caused by a lack of oxygen and blood flow to the heart. I would say it would be the second one because the box around the heart is also white. There's also some kind of blue rhythm that may be a heart rhythm. SAT is written several places on the scan, according to the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. SAT means Spontaneous Awakening Trials. THMO is also written. My first thought is that it's an anagram for Moth, the company that is labeled all over Sam's apartment in the first trailer. There also appears to be a legend for the heat looking graph that we got on here. All the stuff on this chart could literally be anything that Kojima-san makes up. Anyway, Fragile and Captain peel open the literal coffin like, bruh, you know you're not supposed to do that, right? It always curses the world or something, whatever. Don't, you're not supposed to do it. So they do it anyway. Then Fragile pours some kind of clear liquid on her arm. There's a bit of writing on her glove, but I'm not too sure if it means anything. She wipes away the tar and we get a peek into the coffin from the other direction. It's hard to make out if there's something there besides her dress. In the next shot, it's super clear that this is mostly taking place in the Magellan. Can we just acknowledge how rad the captain looks in the shot? Anyway, captain hangs a bag of some kind of IV fluid while Fragile places the IV. The IV itself is blue. Not sure if it would be connected to the network automatically or not. But it is that bridge's blue color. It appears that Fragile administers some kind of air-loaded injection into her arm. There also might be another IV in the top of the arm. Because there's clearly something that looks injected into that vein under the skin, and it's huge. The fluid in the vial is also like army green, so I don't know what that is. Here we get a shot of Fragile's freaky hand mask all blinged out with the network ice. It's something to note that she wears it on her freaky hand instead of her actual hand. It's weird, right? She doesn't open her eyes all the way as if this body has an effect on her. If you remember from the first game, Fragile has dooms. Then some kind of tentacle print appears to be on this chick's inner arm. What's most interesting is Fragile and Captain's response to this. This tentacle thing is not good. According to McLovin Trill 5798, People are inside of the tar, almost like cocooned or mummied, and the spots are where they get the sustenance from the soup, aka the tar. So maybe the stranding is an entity feeding on people, but you can still rescue them? I really like the idea of being able to rescue the people who might be stranded. It would also fit nicely with the already established themes of connection. Boy Captain really said it's drip or drown out here and I ain't drowning. The hat has a patch with a snake that is wrapped around an anchor with cool chiral hands growing up from the sides. The snake reminds me of a medical logo. So maybe this is a medical ship that was repurposed? Not sure about that either. Uh, there's also the DHV Magellan patch, which Kojima released the logo of in a tweet. Captain seems very interested in what's going on with her arm and starts messing with it. Doing this reveals two things. First being spikes come out of the center of the tentacles. Then the little stingers retract. She's leaking tar. And when he messes with it, the same kind of hive says what Sam gets in episode one happens. And for some reason, it seems that Captain is kind of excited about this discovery. Fragile, though, does not seem as enthusiastic. So Captain starts tugging on it, and the stinger spits out what looks like tar and chiral matter. Fragile's weird glove hands shield her eyes very quickly, which makes you wonder how this thing is hooked up. Perhaps it's the Automated Public Assistance Company. Anywho, chiral tar goo burns through Fragile's glove and causes a timefall reaction. Then, there's a shot of Fragile's point of view, showing maybe L fanning? It's hard to tell. Based on the art that was released on Kojima's Twitter, she's wearing something with the same neckline. The coffin also has green looking tarnished all over the cracks. The eyes open and they are green. So like, perhaps this is somehow Lou? The next sequence has Lou, then there's little BB Doom's hand marks all over the inside of the esophagus. Tar is leaking from the eyes. 
she burps up the fucking Magellan. <laughs> fucking radical, dude. I guess this is where we would be coming from the tar pool into Lou and traveling through her strand? I don't know. Maybe. Welcome to Drawbridge, Sam. And to the GHV Magellan, our mobile base of operations. Come on, I'll help you get your bearings. This is the ship's armory. Here you can check your weapons and put them through their paces. These rooms over here belong to other members of the crew. They're pretty much the same as yours. And the shower's down at the end. This is one hell of a ship you got here. Courtesy of the UCA, I'm guessing. No. As I told you, Drawbridge is a civilian outfit. But we do have a generous patron with access to plenty of capital and tech. Sounds like a UCA big shot. Don't ask me. We've never met face to face. They value their privacy. Seriously? No better than to believe that bullshit. The next sequence starts with Sam being acquainted to the boat's various vicinities by Fragile. She welcomes Sam to Drawbridge kind of coldly or perhaps kind of melancholy. Their skin is blue and there seems to be light water refractions all over the walls. This tells us that they are likely in the seam. As they walk through the hallways, it reveals a bunch of little details. There's this little light in the bottom right that could go red later on in the case of emergency, maybe. The door slides open to reveal the armory. We got the quad launcher. We got what looks like a harpoon, perhaps even a light harpoon and a heavy harpoon, though the heavy harpoon be looking like a grenade launcher, low key. VR headset for VR missions, pretty sick. Just like Metal Gear and apparently the first Death Stranding, we actually never ended up doing the range, so. Some kind of collapsible something, maybe carriers? Not sure. The drawbridge, trademark pistols, Sam's strand. <laughs> Hermetic grenades, probably some smoke-like grenades with other various grenade-type weapons. A marksman rifle, a shotgun, an assault rifle, and an LMG. This probably takes place right after the scene where Sam watches the Magellan materialize out of tar in front of his house, as so eloquently highlighted by TGLTW. One thing I did notice is that there's no plants growing on the walls like in the first scene with Fragile and Louise. Moving on here, they peek around into rooms that look pretty blank. I mean, there's nothing. Nothing on the shelf or anything. Down the hall looks to be one of those Im immersion baths, Maybe. Something someone, I guess, shared on Twitter and got shared in the Death Stranding Discord server is that the Magellan's main cabin that connects the rooms looks like something from Metal Gear. Interesting stuff. And it's clearly cold here in the seam, because you can see old Sam's breath. Now, remember, he is old in this sequence. Sam remarks on the ship and bluntly assumes that the ship was given to her by the UCA. Fragile tells Sam that Drawbridge is a civilian outfit. Then she hints toward a patron with access to Capital Line Tech. Does she mean Die Hardman? Perhaps it's Dead Man. But then she says, but don't ask me, we've never met face to face. So it can't be them. So perhaps it's the characters Sam hasn't met yet. Clearly, Sam is referencing to when Fragile was carrying around bombs for Higgs. He gave her a choice to run through Timefall and save the city or jump to the beach and save herself. She saved the city. She said she wouldn't do it again. But here we are. Down the hall is what looks to be cargo. It's too blurry to tell. The lights on the little access pads are teal, distinctly not blue. There's a hatch and a ladder and another teal access panel. The little box on the wall is impossible to make out. There's some kind of gas line and a power grid. The door opens in front of them and they appear to step into what looks like an elevator. It's the same deal as America. The people here are all spread out, cut off from one another. We want you to help us bring the world together. <clears throat> Sam, would you mind if I join you? Humor him. Mm. His knowledge and experience will probably come in handy down the road. Yes. Really, Sam? 
Your buttocks? What about shotgun? I prefer the driver's seat. <laughs> the next sequence, the ship is out of the seam. Sam is now young. He's young. Traveling through the tar might be like Speaker for the Dead, where when they travel, they must picture themselves, and when they do, the image of how they see themselves is reversed. Kind of like when Fragile pictures BB as equipment to get her to Amelie's beach. He puts on his necklace of Bic lighters that are likely the access keys for whatever the network uh, he is supposed to connect now. He has a BB pod on his front, likely with the BT Lou on his chest. No, <laughs> how could they do this to BB? The light is blue, so it is connected to the network. Another thing is, his suit also has glowing blue stripes through it. Maybe our suits have some crazy new paraglider attachment. One can hope, right? Sam's got the full drawbridge drip going on, including the original IP do not steal power arms. I got a question. How does Fragile actually pee in that thing? She's got a freaky puppet guy that the people are calling Mimir, and I'm so hyped to have two companions. You slash Ethan HML called him the Alan Wake puppet. Then I saw an article about it. I don't know. I never played Alan Wake. Homie can move his arms around and talk. He's like stop motion, which is a really cool effect. A tweet from Kojima says, quote, about the living puppet of the new character in Death Stranding 2 on the beach, I intentionally dropped the frame rate to give him the stop motion look, borrowing the bits of puppet elements like Benraku puppets, ventriloquist puppets, and stop motion. And there's a tweet that alludes to Kojima working with Alberto Mielko, the animation genius behind Spider-Man Into the Universe, Netflix's Love and Death and Robots, Jabaro, and The Witness. Charlie thinks Mimir is evil, but I think he's gonna have an emotional backstory that we're gonna cry our eyes out to. Couple things to note in this shot. One, Homie's eyebrows are huge. I mean, like, look at those things. Two, the puppet's got green eyes. Three, Fragile's little hands have a hexagon-like pattern, which kind of reminds me of the terminals at Bridges. Sam walks into the main terminal of the Magellan, likely to go out of the front, right? Looks like the vehicles could spawn from right under this main circle. There's like a fire extinguisher and some glasses, maybe like oxygen or something. Sam has the chiral holder thing on his backpack, so chirelium is likely present wherever Sam is going to go. It's probably Mexico. But your position. The problem is not everybody wants to be part of the UCA. That's not the plan, Sam. The UCA isn't looking to expand its borders. Just like with Mexico. It's definitely Mexico. They want to bring new regions into the network. Anyway, the DHV Magellan's here to back you up. As always, you'll be the one leading the way to expand the network. What's your role in all this? You're the commander, huh? That's right. These days I'm fragile in name only. Going from left to right, there's a city and then there's some strands. They don't look like they're being pulled tight. In Death Stranding, the strands are almost completely vertical. These kind of look like they have a lot of slack to them. There's also what looks to be a pyramid in the distance. In the first game, the spiritualist, we call her Bree, told us that some of these pyramids built by the ancients had portals to the beach. There's also smoke coming out right next to the pyramid. Mysterious stuff, guys. There's also this shitty, awful terrain. I mean, just look at it. Just look, look at it. Look at that terrain. Giant cacti. Looks like the city from a different angle. Either way, we got packages, boys. And you know what that means. Samazon Prime, baby. You know that's right. Then there's a desert, I guess. I don't know if we go to a different continent after Mexico or if this is supposed to be Mexico. I don't know. I don't know. There's also some water or tar shimmering off in the distance. Most likely tar. Then on the left is probably the structure that Sam is walking to. Perhaps some mysterious spooky ruins. And of course, there's going to be highways to build. But where the zip lines though? But, but like where, where the zip lines at? Though the highway design looks pretty smooth and different. Also, the little beams that whoosh past us are now curved with Gucci street light upgrades. The same weird pebbles floating up from it. Perhaps this time there will be day-night cycles since clearly this is taking place at night. There's also a city. The lights are on. Pretty exciting. 
maybe this time we'll get to meet some NPCs. That would be so hype. Then Sam walks out of some sort of facility and the Magellan torching the shit out of whatever is behind it, I, I think. Perhaps it's a story beat. I don't know. There's also a red light on the belly of the ship and what looks like a force field around this little eyeball thing. You brought America together, helped it be reborn as the UCA. But I'm afraid the death stranding is far from over. Humanity is still in danger, still on the brink of extinction. Don't act like you don't see it. A lot of things changed after you went off on your own, especially within the UCA. The next shot definitely confirms that it, there is indeed time fall as there would be no other reason to have a timefall shelter. Also, the water can break apart structures, but it looks like if you actually place them properly, it won't be destroyed. Maybe. They also turn off when touched by water and break apart if they are in the path of the water. There's also that weird pyramid in the background. Just chillin', by the way. The water looks the same tar brown color, but maybe. This is the tar pool that was electrified near the volcano observatory. Whatever that electricity was is in the water and deactivating and tearing down the bridge and all the other structures. Maybe. Huh. That's a weird engraving. Wonder what it means. Next shot has a mountain collapsing. The background has some strands that don't have green on them yet. So maybe they are not part of the UCA yet. There's also an upside down rainbow in the background as well with the blue missing. Meaning this is another stranding or the stranding from before. All I know is that Sam is here and the mountain didn't start falling until he got here. So Sam, what did you do? And the next shot, we're in fucking Kaled, boys. Like, why are we in Elden Ring all of a sudden? There's also some big BTs that are very clearly defined way stronger than the last game. Even when your BB bond is completely maxed out, it isn't this strong. So maybe when BB senses BTs, this guy turns red because BB's dead. And now we are in the Hunter's Dream. It's Bloodborne, baby. There's a manta ray, BT manta ray. So that's cool. Also, the pyramid is here, chillin'. In the next shot, we're back in the lands between, but this time we're at the Carrion Mansion. This guy is a snail though. Original IP, do not steal snail. When the BT snail Carrion hand slashes, there's little chiral trails. Bridge is no longer oversees the distribution network. They withdrew once things were up and running. So your friends and coworkers all went their separate ways. Within network coverage, there's no need to rely on human porters anymore. So after I closed up shop, I went and started a new group. One that handles work in regions outside the UCA. We decided to call ourselves Drawbridge. Man, I cannot get enough of Captain's Drip, dude. Like, look at this guy. Bruh. He looks so dripped out. He's also got some BT patches from the last game, the Magellan patch and his sick fucking tar cat. He turns and inserts his nub into the machine. The cat either jumps off or it jumps in. It's really hard to tell and it's snowing outside. There's caution light on the dash. Everything else is kind of hard to make out. I don't know. I'm no pilot, so, but that little controller looks like a pew pew. Looks like the captain sinks the ship into the tar, confirming TG's theory. Also, Notice the details on the side of the ship are the same as what is on Amelie's pod. Very curious. There's also some kind of lighthouse or tower off in the distance with a ladder. Reverse trike confirmed. Cargo confirmed. But this time it's drawbridge trademarked. Cabless truck confirmed, I guess. Maybe this one will move over terrain better. Maybe. One can hope, right? Backwards hat confirmed. Also, there's some mysterious strands with slack in them. Will there be caves? Probably not. One can hope. Finn Vost 9349 mentioned, also given how the Magellan travels through the seam, 
through dimensions and the new open truck has two seats, I wonder if maybe multiple Sams might be able to inhabit the same instance of Earth. TLDR multiplayer? Other summonable Sams. It would be pure chaos and I'm totally here for it. Sam approaches the Magellan outside of whatever government facility he's rolling up on. I think that the pyramid is right here again. This time, I think we're leaving this area and the strands in the background are blue and green, showing that they're fully connected. Sam gets a cool Gucci room upgrade at some point, I guess. We decided to call ourselves Drawbridge. With the support of the Chiral Network and APAS, humanity will be free from the need to move around. Bots are capable of handling deliveries. Then we got the APAC bots, who look to have some glowing yellow stuff like Higgs. They have canisters and like some kind of rifle. They have these super weird caskets on their back, and Charlie thinks that they might be BBs in there, and he's okay. beside himself. Look at the backpack. There's BBs. But I think that it's just a weird robot cat that he throws out, whatever that <sighs> casket is. They're fucking BB bots. They're fucking BB backpacks. No. He's alive. He called himself a ghost, but... He found a way back from the beach just so he could kill us. He said he came back to get revenge on you and me. It has a blue light on it showing it's connected to the network. Higgs rises out like a mummy and reveals that he's using Amelie's body. This makes sense because all the extinction entities had bodies that were still intact. Now remember how the Magellan had that design on the side? It's also on the guitar strap. So, APAC probably made the Magellan too. Hey brother. Did you miss me? Yeah, I figured you'd pay this place a visit. Seeing as how I've been distributing the fruits of this fine factory all over the continent. Some guns and violence, the whole damn world could be yours. Same as it ever was. Which is probably a reference to talking heads. Same as it ever was. Oh, looks like you decided to trade in that rope for a stick this go around. Well, I suppose even a porter has to pull the trigger from time to time. Oh, what about you? Hey, buddy, are you just another soulless little husk, huh? Let go of me! Oh. Pathetic guitarist. Where's the rest of your band? No, uh, 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 uh. Well, ain't that something? Ivy Friday posted this image to Twitter for context. Higgs fucks with the puppet and then takes Lou. He instantly feels a connection to the beach, activating what looks like his dooms. At P of Cap mentioned that it's definitely Studio Ghibli vibes, and I gotta agree. Sam is young, by the way, and he asks if it's Higgs that killed Lou. Was it you, Higgs? Huh? Was it you that killed Lou? You still don't know, do you? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Lou is Amelie. It's like a first instinct thing from the delivery of that line. But who knows? These are all just legends anyway. Then Lou taunts the ever-living shit out of Higgs, and she's practically rolling him. Now, when this is happening, there's almost a full, complete rainbow when Higgs's dumb guitar riff electricity hits the lightning at Lou. I say Lou because you can hear a baby maniacally cooing at Higgs nearly the whole time, and this shit is hilarious. Samurai BB with a crazy glowing katana. Also, the Autobots disappear almost like thermite. Maybe it's 
like an antimatter blade because it does bend the space around it. Weird Sheikah technology shit. Something he said. You don't know a goddamn thing about Lou. All right, Sam. Let's see what we can find on Lou. In this sequence with the apartments, there's a wall saying cooling, a barcode on one of the cabinets. Norman Reedus is wearing an apron and the backwards cap. If you want answers, you're going to have to find them yourself. But the ones you do find, well, that pain you nurse will only get worse. Sam the man in the dark about everything. In the next scene, Lou and Sam are somewhere very cold, and there's a little baby Luca on her hood. She's in teal, and Sam's hood is down. So I'm not sure if this is Time Fall Snow. And gosh, this moment is just so dang cute. Look at me, look at it. Don't forget, coming on this expedition was meant to help you find the strength to carry on. And you have. We all know you've got this. Now it's time to finish the journey, Sam. Please understand, Sam. So TG was right. We are going to the beach, to the Death Stranding. Once again, there is another clear shot of the hands with the hexagon pattern, some chiral buttons, and Charlie thinks Fragile is smoking a chiral cigarette because she cries. A tweet by Sugi Noki says, quote, Fragile cigarettes emit smoke like a Kuya Shonen statue. The statue has an important cultural significance to Kyoto. Six small figures of Amida stream from the Kuya's mouth, saying the six Chinese characters of the Nimbutsu. According to Wikipedia, Nimbutsu is a Buddhist practice central to the tradition of the Pure Land Buddhism, though not exclusive to it. In the context of pure land practice, it typically refers to repetition of a name, of Amida, in a ritualized form, though in some contexts it refers to instead more of a meditative practice. Another thing about these freaky little unsettling hands, P of Cap caught a bit of the text on their hand, requires special tools to disassemble, and I hope this does not get used against Fragile. Definitely unsettling foreshadowing, though, right? We never meant to string you along. Then the drawbridge logo. Both stick and rope to protect and connect. Together for tomorrow. Corporate shit. That chrysalis, we found her inside. It was filled with a fluid that contained amino acids. One's identical in structure to the kind found in tar. I'm sorry, there are amino acids in tar? As in proteins? Of course. How else did you think that chiral creatures could emerge from it? Some have even theorized that the tar is a sort of primordial soup. I was there. I saw her home. And it was a hellhole. Then we got Ellie Fanning, who goes to eavesdrop. Looks like someone in green boots in the room. Maybe someone we haven't met. Maybe Shioli's character. Who knows? The logo on the wall behind L is impossible to make out. It appears that Fragile is also in the room because you can almost make out those weird little freaky blue hands. They appear to be observing some kind of map. This kind of looks like the southwestern side of the map from the central region of the United States, but I'm not sure. Now, I think the scene has come full circle because Fragile and Captain are now looking at the chick out of the cocoon. Look, right there, an IV. There's also these white strands coming from her, like a puppet. She is also levitating, so they have to stripe her in. Elle really looks like she has the same color eyes as Louise, though the green background might be influencing me. He calls someone's place a hellhole, and Elle storms away. Charlie thinks that maybe she thinks that he is talking about her beach. That was a mouthful. Charlie thinks that this is what upset her. You see, after you left Bridges, I decided to do a little digging. Now, according to them, BB-28 was flagged for disposal and subsequently incinerated four years ago, long before you and Lou first met. In this, finally, there's some books on the shelf. 
And A. Venom tweeted, Behind Sam's bed, we see the famous novel Moby Dick and the book The Voyage of the Beagle, a book documenting Charles Darwin's voyage on the Beagle from 1831 to 1836. The Kojima Ludens cup on the shelf. Also, Sam is young. I, again, Deadman tells us a little bit more about BB, which I broke down in my previous analysis. Finally, one last cool detail I found on Twitter at Tonkin Puka said, in the previous work, the story was about trying to connect the rope and see what was at the end of the rope. But in two, the story will change to seeing how the rope can be cut once it's connected. There are two extra connections here. Are these L's and Shiolis? So what details did I miss? Make sure you drop your theories and speculation in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member or signing up on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.